Righty ho! Hi everyone! Welcome again to Author Story. I'm Alexander Lim, your host, and for this episode, I'm interviewing Firze Duma, author of the book It Ain't So Awful Falafel. And for those of you following along who are interested, you can go over now to the Amazon link in the description below the video and check out or get a copy of Firze's book. So, Firze, welcome to Author Story. Thank you for having me. Cool. So, Firze, please tell us about yourself and the book. First off, what's your background? Well, uh, you know, I have actually two memoirs that are currently in print. Uh, mm. Both of them ended up on the New York Times bestseller list. Nice. Um, but that they were written for adults. I'm, I'm a humorist. I write adult nonfiction. Mm. And It Ain't So Awful Falafel is my first foray into younger audiences. Okay. And it's also historical fiction. So unlike my other works, it's, um, it's, there's, some, there's some things in there that I made up. Mm, okay, all right, cool. But I understand that uh, you, you yourself, I mean, uh, you, you did kind of like, like the, the lead character, Zalmarad Cindy, she's uh, like an Iranian uh, girl who went to the U.S. Uh, is this kind of like your background as well? Oh, absolutely. When I was seven years old, my family moved from Abadan, Iran to Whittier, California. This mm. was back in 1972. Right. And we lived there for two years, and then we moved back to Iran, and then two years later we moved back to America, and then we moved to a different city in America. Right. So I was perpetually the new kid in school, and I was, you know, at the time my name was Firuze Jazoyedi. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, I had this name that didn't fit on any forms, and nobody right. could pronounce it, nobody could remember it. Right. Um, so I think it, it, I was sort of destined to end up having to write about it. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. I got that. So let's get on to the book. Uh, can you give us, uh, for the benefit of our listeners who don't know anything about it, can you just give us a short summary of what the book's all about? It Ain't So Awful Falafel is a story about an Iranian girl living in Southern California in the late 70s and early 80s. And that was the time of the Iranian Revolution and mm. when a group of Americans were taken hostage in the embassy in Tehran, Iran. Right. So there was all of a sudden a lot of uh, anti-Iranian sentiment. And this is a book about how this Iranian girl gets through that period with the mm. help of her friends and her community. And I know my description doesn't sound very funny, but it's actually a very funny book. Mm -hmm. uh, and the friends in the book are actually based on my real friends. Um, okay. And you can actually see their pictures on my website. Mm. All right, cool. All right, cool. So as you mentioned before, like you, you've written two novel memoirs before this and those are intended for adults uh, it ain't so awful is for middle schoolers I believe uh, and you know for those of our listeners who aren't familiar with the American system of education this is like grade 7 and 8 an intermediate level between elementary school and high school proper so uh, first off what inspired you to write this book well you know my first book funny and farsi I wrote for adults and mm -hmm. it ended up being used in schools all over the US okay and so I thought okay well and and my second book as well is used by is read by people of all ages so then I thought okay well I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna write a book for younger audiences and you know I say this but at the same time uh, the only difference in the writing is the amount of history in it and the title of the book I mean a story is a story it's not like I, I don't it took me a long time to figure out what it means to write for a younger audience and you know they, it's not it's not all that different okay but, um, basically uh, it ain't so awful falafel um, is a fictionalized version of what happened uh, to me and my, and my family in the late 70s and early 80s mm -hmm. but I wanted to tell the story in a way that that would uh, perhaps be a little bit more interesting for 10 to 14 year olds right Right. Okay. What inspired you to write the book, you know, for middle schoolers? I mean, rather than well, like, say, for adults? Because I think that, uh, you know, I went through a very difficult period with the revolution and the hostages being taken. My father lost his job and could not find another job. You know, to be an Iranian man at the time hmm. in America just meant that nobody wanted to hire you. Right. And I was the only, we were the only Iranian family in, in our town. I didn't know anybody else who was going through what I was going through. Right. And it's just a very dark period in my life. So I wanted to write a book for middle school because I know that a lot of kids go through something very difficult mm. right around the age 12, 13, 14. So I wanted to write a book for them that would basically give them hope. And, you know, I dedicated the book to all the kids who don't belong for whatever reason. Right, right. And so I wanted to take my experience and just 
be able to use it in a positive light for others. Hmm. Right. Okay. Cool. And you know, I I say I must really commend you for the way you wrote it out. I mean, we all know what's going on with all the extremism and all that stuff and the hatred going on in the world. So it's you know it's kind of nice to get a book like this that you know that doesn't have that kind of same kind of uh, message in it. I mean, sure there are a lot of hard parts, but the ultimate message is something that you know I'm sure a lot of people, particularly teenagers, can relate with. Well, you know, the irony is that I started writing this book in 2008, and it's mm -hmm. based on events that happened in my life. So it's not as if I had a crystal ball and I could figure out what book was needed in 2016. Right, right. <laughs> it, does, you know, it is weirdly, weirdly fitting in really, really well, unfortunately, to what is going on throughout the world right now. There's yeah. such an anti-immigrant uh, sentiment everywhere. Yeah, and you know, it's sometimes uh, it's nice to read a book and be reminded of a positive immigrant experience. Yes, yes, and I must say, uh, the book the, the book kind of does that pretty well. Well, thank you. Hmm. Okay, so the lead character. Let's see. Her she is Zamarod Yousafzadeh. Did I pronounce her name correctly? <laughs> That's right. Okay, but she prefers to call herself Cindy. Uh, she's the protagonist of the book, and uh, well, as you mentioned, her background is similar to yours. Iranian expat expatriate family in the U.S. Relations aren't particularly good between the two countries. Uh, how much of your I, and how much of yourself did you put into her character? Well, all the emotions that the main character goes through, I actually went through. Okay. So that part is entirely authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason I call it historical fiction is that. I took some of the characters, real characters in my life, and I made them into one person, um, okay. just just for the sake of making the story, streamlining the story. Right. But the historical facts in the book, by the way, are entirely true. Okay. So by reading the story without realizing it, you learn a lot about U.S.-Iran history of the late 70s, early 80s, which right. is still going on. I mean, the events that happened at that time are still very much alive and, and it's important to know about them if you're going to watch the evening news and try to put any sense into what's going on. Right. Okay. Okay. Got that. And so, you know, going back to you to when you were an expatriate in the U.S., how did, how did those particular experiences shape you as a person and as an author? So, you know, my family and I came to America in 1972. My father was an engineer and he had okay. a two-year assignment in California. So we came at a time when just about every American that we encountered had never heard of Iran. I mean, okay. we, we would tell them we're from Iran, and they would just look at us and say, where is that? Right, And, right. you know, people would ask us about camels, and they'd ask us if we lived in tents. Okay, and okay. Go, my goodness, you know, my father had a Chevrolet, you know. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, you know, and I'd only seen a camel one time in my life, and it was in a zoo. Right. So uh, there was, you know, it was a very different America, but... It was an extremely kind and hospitable America. In fact, I'm still friends with my with the people I met back in 1972. Hmm. And in fact, just yesterday, in fact, I was exchanging emails with my second grade crossing guard. So it was it was a really a wonderful community. And then we were in America, living in a different town, when the Iranian Revolution happened, hmm. and when a group of Americans were taken hostage in the American embassy in Tehran. And right. that's when the shock of my life happened, which is that Americans just turned against all Iranians. And right. that just, I could not, I couldn't comprehend that because I was about 13 years old. Right. And I kept thinking, how do people hate an entire country? Hmm. And that was, that was a bewildering puzzle for me that, that, that I never figured out. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's, that's definitely heavy stuff for, for a teenager to go through. Right, and, and the thing was, I didn't know anybody else going through it. I mean, I right, right. was the only Iranian at my school, so it's not like anybody could relate to the fact that, gee, my country just had a revolution. Um, that was a, a case of uh, terminal uniqueness. But, uh, <laughs> right. That was, it was difficult to go through that. Yeah, okay. I, I got that. But I'm, I'm sure you got through it eventually. I mean... Um... Oh, absolutely. And in fact, you know, I got through it because I had such a wonderful community that I lived in. And really my my book is not just the story of, of the main character Zomorod mm -hmm. it's really about her community and mm -hmm. how kindness is never forgotten that that's that's a very strong theme in the book yeah great 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 so that's that's definitely a great uh, great theme right there 
So getting back to the book, um, how much was it? How much was it a stretch for you? I mean, right now you you wrote two books for adults before, but now you're writing for a middle school audience. How much was it a stretch for you to write for a middle school audience? Well, this book took me seven years to write. Okay, <laughs> so all right. It was actually really hard, to be honest. Okay. It was really hard because I have to figure out what it means to write for a younger audience. Because mm. I am a firm believer that a good story is a good story. Now, right. of course, there's subject matter that is inappropriate for younger audiences. But for anybody out there who's read my work, you know, that is not, that's not my issue. My, my life has been pretty Amish. Um, so there's really no no material that I that I had to, to leave out. Right. I finally realized that for me there really wasn't that big of a difference in writing for a younger audience. Like I said earlier, um, what took me a long time was figuring out how much history to put in the book because mm. there's the US Iran history is so interesting and so few people know about it. Right. And the more I wrote, the more I wanted to write. And then at, at some point I thought, okay, well I'm not writing a history book. I need to figure out what is essential for the story. Right. So literally, I spent two years writing and deleting and writing and deleting and figuring out how to weave the history in the book so that it just seems natural and seamless. Right. Right. Okay. So it's you know it's it sounds it sounds to me like you've got enough material in there for uh, for a history book you know for like relationship between the U.S. and Iran. <laughs> yeah, but gosh, you know who would read that book? I mean. That's, <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm lucky that I'm a humorist, that I'm a, that I'm able to write books that make people laugh because I think that is what initially draws readers to my books. And you know, my first book, Funny and Farsi, was a finalist for the Thurber Prize in American Humor, and right. I lost to John Stewart. Oh, okay. And so uh, you know, I, I'm I'm fortunate. I always say humor is my secret sauce because otherwise nobody would really want to read about any Iranian girl. <laughs> true. True. Good point. So, what was the easiest thing for you when you were writing out It Ain't So Awful? The easiest thing for me, I would say, are the funny parts. Okay. And the hardest parts are the parts where I had to, to go and feel the sadness that I felt mm. when I was, um, when I was, you know, an adolescent. Because, right. you know, if you're going to write a book based on your own life, you do have to kind of time travel. Yeah. And... And if you want to be authentic, you really have to let yourself go and feel those feelings again. And I'm telling you, the late 70s, early 80s were horrible the first time I lived through them, and they were just as horrible the second time. Okay. And I'm so happy to be done with this book because I don't want to be back in the late 70s, early 80s again. I'm done. <laughs> okay. All right. So it sounds it sounds it sounds to me kind of like that you kind of went on a journey uh, as you did this book. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I. All of my books and all my, you know, pieces for magazines and newspapers, they're all, they all have, they're all based on my own life. Mm -hmm. So, to some degree, I'm always looking backwards, but, you know, with this particular book, because it took me seven years, and because I was, I was actually doing a lot of research, I was watching a lot of old news clips, reading right. articles, right. talking to people, it really took me back far more than, than my other books. Mm. And... Um, and that was, you know, it, it was hard. I mean, I, I would wake up in the morning and start writing and, I, you know, I would be back in the late 70s. And at some point in the day, I have to remind myself, like, okay, it's now 2010. You know, I'm going to go, I'm going to just put this writing aside and I'm going to go do what I have to do today. But that was hard. I mean, it seems like right. a part of me was just stuck in the late 70s. Right. Well, so so I guess I guess you can say then that I mean that time period really made a, a, a really big impression on you. I mean, for for you to get that involved uh, years yeah. later when you're writing on it. Well, you know, I think that that perhaps for everybody, there's one period in your life that ends up defining you. Mm -hmm. And this for me was was that period. The late '70s, early '80s was definitely that period for me. And it also left me with a lot of questions. Uh, without answers. Okay. So somehow in writing this book, it was also my way of going back and, and maybe answering some of my own questions. Mm. Okay, I, cool. I got that. So let's talk about Cindy for a bit. I mean, I believe she was listed at uh, Book Riot, I think it was. Uh, one of the top 50 best heroines for middle grade books. Uh, what? <laughs> yep. And if that's the case, you know, what, it, what do you think is it about her that makes her, you know, that special? I mean, top 50 best heroines, that's something. Yeah, well, the thing with, with the main character, Cindy, is that she always tries. You know, she never gives up. And I think this that's an admirable quality in anyone. And she also remains kind. 
Um, well, most of the book, not 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 the entirely, but she at least tries as humanly possible to remain kind, and she's funny. And I think people always admire people who have a sense of humor. Hmm. And she has she has a pretty good sense of humor. Okay, okay, I got that. So, uh, okay, so I guess she's uh, she's a bit like you in that respect then. <laughs> well, she's she's much cooler. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. oh, that's the great thing about writing about yourself is you you can write your best version. You you describe yourself in the best light possible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you know, I I really have to ask this. Um, who is falafel? Okay, so falafel is a food. It is a fried bean ball. Okay. And it's uh, it's popular throughout the Middle East and and now it's it's you know in America as well. I thought everyone knew what a falafel is, but I've had a couple of interviews where they've said, "What is a falafel?" So right. I should have included like a recipe or something. But it's um, actually falafels are not from Iran, although we do now have them in Iran. Right. But the title of the book uh, is is a sentence that somebody says at some point that has a lot of meaning. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I got that. Okay. Um. Recently, you know, there's been uh, like a huge push for like more diversity in children's literature. Um, is this is this something that you kind of are interested in? Something you kind of have some personal stake in? Something that means something to you personally? So you know, I like a lot of writers was a bookworm growing okay. up, and you know, I I read you know every book that I could get get my hand on. You know, I never read a book where that the character was Iranian you know okay. an Iranian girl all right and <clears throat> I never honestly I never thought about it I never thought gee I wish there were a book that where the character you know was like me now as an adult and as a mother of, of three kids right I think it's incredibly important to have books where the characters reflect what society looks like mm -hmm. and and I think it's, it's you know the character Cindy is not is not somebody that you have to be Iranian to relate to whatsoever. Right. In fact, the reason I dedicated the book to all the kids who don't belong for whatever reason is that she's an outsider, and I think mm. every kid is an outsider at some point. But I do think that it's it's absolutely wonderful and essential to have books uh, that cover the, a whole wide variety of, of people in the world. I think it makes us all kinder and smarter and I feel like hmm. you know every time you read a book it like it opens a window into your soul and the more different types of books you read the more windows you have and it's just there's a lot of light coming in mm. okay all right got that so yeah I mean uh, definitely diversity is very important I mean the United States of now isn't exactly like the United States that it was during the times of the Iranian Revolution changes have happened Absolutely. I mean, we, in the first two years that we lived in California, we ran into another Iranian family one time. Okay. In two years. So that tells you something. Because now, I mean, if you're in California, you can't even avoid an Iranian. <laughs> you know, they're everywhere. Right. <laughs> Definitely. And there's a lot of great, let me tell you, there are lots of great Iranian restaurants. I mean, right. this is one of the, the great gifts of immigration is that people bring their delicious cuisine with them. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> so, is there anything you'd want to have happen from uh, readers reading the book? Something they want to get? Something that you would like them to get? Sorry. You know, I hope that readers, when they finish the book, feel that sadness that I feel when I finish a book that I really liked. Right. So that, that cause, you know, because then that always makes me go and find another book. You know, mm. I'm not. I I don't write with any politics or any you know, any message so in mind, as much as I just hope that people really, really enjoy reading what I write. Because, you know, pe people, different people get different things out of my writing. Right, um, right. And that's not the point. The point is to really just enjoy reading a story. And I hope that I have said, I have told the story in a way that resonates with a lot of readers. Mm, okay, well, definitely, that's, uh, that's definitely something good. So, short plug, uh, you have a new initiative, right? The, the Falafel Kindness Project? Right. What's, what's it all about? Well, so, you know, the, there's a very strong theme in this book about kindness. Right. And I, as an adult, I am who I am because of all the kindnesses that came my way in, right. during difficult times in my life. So, I wanted to create an, initi an initiative uh, for school kids that mm. would make them realize how much power they have in kindness. Mm -hmm. You know, in America, there's a lot of conversation about bullying, and 
first of all, I don't think that's improved the situation at all. Right. And I also think that having talking about bullying, I just, I just I don't see what good it does. I think a better thing is to talk about the power of kindness. Because that is something that we're all capable of. You know, no mm -hmm. one's going to really stand up to a bully. I certainly would not have. Right. But we're but we know who the kids are who are outsiders, and it takes very little to make their day a lot better. You know, just you know, in the book, Cindy's eating lunch alone every day until a girl named Carolyn comes and has lunch with her. And this is something that really happened in my life. And Carolyn, okay. to this day, is still my friend. And you know, this is something that kids can do. It's so simple. And it really can change somebody's, uh, not just day at school, but just their experience overall. So I, I just wanted to encourage small acts of kindness within the schools. Mm, okay. So the, the, is, it, is this, because um, like with, with other projects like this, I mean, I kind of imagine like, you know, uh, someone coming into a school and then explaining about it and talking about it and then uh, the kids applying it. Is this, is this project something like that? No, actually, this is so, so much simpler. When you read the book, you will be inspired to do something kind. That, I guarantee Ah, okay. All right, cool. It's very, I got it's, it's very, it's very organic. Yeah, I, I, and I, I just have a lot of faith in it. Okay, so it's, it's, it's like it's more organic than structured then. Absolutely. No structure whatsoever. I have that much faith in humanity. <laughs> All right, cool. Fantastic. Okay, so you are an author. Are there any other stories or topics that you are considering exploring in the future? You know, all of my work, my three books, my magazine articles, my radio pieces, they're all about me. Right, okay. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to just stay on, on that uh, stay on that path. Because, okay. you know, I've, I've only lived one life, so it's not like I can write about my sweetest childhood next. Right, right. But uh, there, there always seems to be more and more. So, um, hopefully, as long as people keep reading, I'll, I'll keep writing. <laughs> okay, I got that. So, is there like a, a, another book coming out in the future? Something we might look forward to? Uh, you know, I, I'm sure there will be. I don't. I don't know what it is yet because mm. uh, it ain't so awful, full awful. It just came out last month. Oh, okay. So um, I'm not. I'm not writing at the at the moment. I'm going to be traveling soon, going to some bookstores in the United States in yeah. July. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm in that mode right now, but I'm sure eventually I will get back in the writing mode. <laughs> okay. Well, looking forward to that next book whenever it does come out. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So uh, before we close, are there any last words of wisdom? Uh, you might like to share to inspire listeners anything from your experience stuff like that well you know I hope that uh, by reading it ain't so awful falafel that people actually uh, find an interest in history if you go to my website there are a lot of videos that actually go with the book and they're really fun videos to look at from the late 70s early 80s I have some music videos I have some interesting news footage but, you know, I used to think that history was the most boring topic because I used to have to memorize all kinds of dates. But history is just the life around us. And right. I, I hope that when people read my novel, that they actually start looking at their lives differently, realizing that someday their life today is going to be history. Right, right, definitely. I mean, we're, we, de we definitely don't think of ourselves as historical figures, but, you know, like to our kids, our grandkids... We are going to be historical figures. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, cool. So in closing, the book is It Ain't So Awful, Falafel. The author is our guest, Firuze Duma. And you can find the book at her website, firuzeduma.com. I'll spell it out. It's F-I-R-O-O-Z-E-H-D-U-M-A-S.com. So firuzeduma.com. So, Firuze, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for being an author story. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Cool. Fantastic. And it's, it's our pleasure to have you with us. It's a very interesting session for me. And, of course, for those of you listening, you can uh, get It Ain't So Awful right now by going to the Amazon link in the description below the video. And if you'd like to follow our author interviews on YouTube, uh, kindly click on the subscribe button if you like. So that's all, folks. So long for now, everyone. I'll be back on Author Story with another inspiring author.